I use a lot of stories. Sometimes I've, I've stolen stories from other folks. I may tell a story of myself. I, so one that I heard a long time ago, and I've used it to talk about motivation, and I've used it to think about how do you engage individuals in something that they may be uncomfortable with, and how individuals can be imprinted very early on that impacts their own ability to learn. And it goes something like this. There was this individual and he went into this um, organization and he wanted to teach them about motivation. So he put on some music and he said, let's dance. And the people sort of looked at him and the first, uh, there were those individuals who came right out on the dance floor. And there were other individuals who were, you know, coaxed maybe, and there are others that were arms folded against the wall, very clearly not want any part of this. And the music stopped and he said, now wasn't that a great time? He said, let's try that again. Well, there were some folks that really got upset. So finally he said to the individuals who immediately started dancing, he said, tell me, how come you came out on the dance floor? And the person said, people said, I love to dance. You know, I dance every chance I get. And so when you put on the music, whoa, we have so much fun. The group that he sort of was able to coax out, he said, you know, I don't really do much dancing. I watched other people. It seemed pretty easy. They seemed to be having a good time. I decided to join them. The folks who were up against the wall clearly disengaged. He said to them, how come you didn't come out and dance? Every one of those individuals had some story about why they didn't dance. Mm -hmm. One young woman said, you know, when I was in elementary school, we had to do social dance. And she said, you know, I was a large girl. And she said, and nobody asked me to dance. Mm -hmm. And she said, the teacher said, well, Betty, what do you expect? Nobody wants to dance with a fat girl. And she said, I've never danced. Another young man, he said, you know, I was in junior high school. I went to the junior high dance. He said, I was all anxious to do this. And so I went up to, walked across. He said, you know, the girls on one side of the gym, the boys on the other. He said, I had to walk all the way across the gym and I asked this young girl to dance and she said, nope. And so he, you know, he had to walk all the way back. But he said, you know, he wasn't dissuaded. He was gonna try this again. So he went back again. He picked out another girl. He said, he picked out the homeliest girl. After he did this about three times, picked out the homeliest girl in the room and asked her to dance. And she just looked at him and said, no. And he said, you know, from that point forward, he was so humiliated that he just never wanted to venture out in dancing again. So I think about how people are impacted in such a way. And so, you know, you can tell a story that actually brings it to their attention and gives them an opportunity. So if you have your own story, you can use, sometimes you have to be careful though, because you don't want it to be about you necessarily. So you might sometimes use um, somebody else or even make the story that might be about you, make the, the the individual, someone other than yourself, so that it's, it doesn't become too personalized, mm -hmm. because sometimes that can backfire. So you have to think about what it is that you're trying to uh, communicate. Are you trying to uh, make a point, or are you trying to engage them with you? And I, th I think there's, there's I, I do those things differently depending on the audience and what mm -hmm. it is I'm trying to convey. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a set way of doing things. Mm 